What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Pat the Designer, back at it again. How y'all feeling today, Chicago? Hopefully everybody's in good spirits in this time of quarantine. And I want to start a discussion with you guys because I think here's a question that a lot of people aren't asking and should be asking. Should the Chicago Bears look to trade Mitchell Trubisky? Let's talk about it right after this. All one, all two. Stop it! You not do him like that! Mercy! Did you not get the memo? Alright, so if you are new to the channel, please like the video, please subscribe to the page because we do talk Chicago sports weekly and we don't want you to miss a thing, so make sure that you hit that bell. We also want to let you know if you are new to the page, we are doing a 1K giveaway. We are giving away a $100 gift card and a Khalil Mack jersey, so check the link in the description to find out how you can enter and how you can increase your chances of winning. So the offseason's underway. The Chicago Bears have made some moves that haven't really sat with everyone in the fan base. I think the only move the Bears have made this offseason that everybody's kind of on board with is the Robert Quinn signing, right? Um, but they did make one big move that really changes how at least the mindset is going forward in the building, and that's trading for Nick Foles. Now, bringing Nick Foles in, listen, a lot of people are you're either on board with it, you're like, this guy won a Super Bowl in this system, or you're like, dude, he's a career backup. He hasn't played 16 games in the league. We need to get a better quarterback. Either way, it looks like the Bears are going to want a starting quarterback who can run this system 100%. No taking plays away, no bending it to fit that quarterback no trying to make things work just for that quarterback and so i ask you with all the needs that the chicago bears have should the bears look to trade mitchell trubisky let me know in the comments below how you feel and the reason that this came to my mind was this uh, uh like i said in the video where they acquired nick Foles, uh who would start week one you're not going to run two different styles in training camp. You're not going to run two different systems. And Nick Foles can't run the kind of system that they had set up for Mitch, right? He's not an RPO guy. He's a stand back in the pocket and make his passes kind of guy. Now, here's the thing, though. Nick Foles understands the system that Nagy's trying to run. Nick Foles understands what Nagy's trying to do. Nick Foles knows the calls. Nick Foles knows everything. So Nagy's probably going to want to run that system more, right? He's going to want to run his system with the guy that understands it most. So do you just cut your ties at this point? and say maybe Mitch just isn't built for this system maybe Mitch isn't the kind of quarterback that Nagy needs running this system now that doesn't mean that Nick Foles is your long-term answer but I would think that if you're already going into the season thinking that Mitch can't run the kind of system we want why not cut your losses with him now and see if you can get some draft capital some assets now I'm not saying it's going to be a second round pick a third round pick but listen you gave up a fourth round pick for Nick Foles that might be nice to get back because you are going to need to address a lot of positions in this uh, draft coming up here. Like, we still need another wide receiver who can stay healthy. I love Anthony Miller, but Anthony Miller does have trouble keeping that arm in socket. Hopefully next season brings better results. Uh if it does, he'll, he's an amazing number two, a slot guy, you know what I'm saying? But I think you need another wide receiver in the building. You need another corner in the building. You definitely need some offensive line help. And listen, you need to address the tight end in the draft because I don't know if Adam Shaheen's going to be on this roster after training camp. So that means you're going to war with Trey Burton, who hasn't been able to stay healthy, and Jimmy Graham, whose talent level has dropped significantly. So like I'm saying, there is a lot of positions that you need to address in this draft and I think that trading away Mitch could grab you at least one, if not two more picks. Uh, lower round picks, of course, but rounds where Ryan Pace has had his most success. I also think it'd be a good reset depending on what team you traded to for Mitch, right? Because listen, we know Mitch hasn't seen success here and Mitch has been thrown into the fire. And listen, sometimes that just doesn't work for a young quarterback. Sometimes he's not able to adapt with that. At the same time, his offensive line hasn't done him any favors, right? So if you trade him to a spot that maybe he's able to develop, he's able to sit behind somebody, he's able to grow, maybe he does get another shot, maybe he's able to come in and be the quarterback that Ryan Pace thought he would have been. And maybe it restarts his career, jump starts things for him, helps him get back on his feet. Because as of right now, going into this season, I don't see Mitch Trubisky being the week one starter. I know a lot of people are saying, listen, they're going to give him the opportunity to lose the job. But here's the thing, Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy know one thing. If they don't get wins this season, if they don't get into a playoff position this season, 
then there's gonna be some head chopping going on, especially looking at Ryan Pace. So if that's the case and you're going into a system season already knowing this guy's not the week one starter, we're going into this season with Nick Foles, then I would personally say, let's get Trubisky on the trade block, see what we can get for him, see how, what kind of picks we can get for him, and see if we can move on. Now, as I've said in many of these videos, I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love for them to walk out there, see Mitch slinging that pill, and all of a sudden they look around and they're like, dang, we just traded for a $20 million backup because uh, that kid's got to play. But if you're coming in, and he still doesn't have a comprehension of the system. He's still not able to read those defenses. He's still not able to do the things that you want to do. Don't put that film on tape because now you're either going to let him go for nothing or you're not even going to be able to trade him because people are going to look at him and be like, why would I trade you something for him? He still can't read defenses. He still can't make these plays. He still can't go through his progression. He's got to be able to do that. The Bears are going to have to address this quarterback situation through the draft no matter what. You got to look at somebody in that second round and say, we got to go get a, our next young guy if you don't believe in Mitch at this point. And I don't know if they do. So get as much draft capital as you can for Mitch. Let's just start this new era. Let's, let's start this new quarterback era where we're back in that quarterback search again, unfortunately. But I do want to know your opinion. So let me know in the comments below, should the Bears look to trade Mitchell Trubisky? I am going to get up out of here, though. It is your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again. If you enjoy this Chicago sports content, click here to keep watching. Peace.